got Moid Bone. Okay. Uh, there are three collection systems. They have a superior posterior and I believe also a middle. Fat. <laughs> and they communicate with the sphenoid sinus in the nasal cavity. So there is a communication between the, the two sinuses, between the ethmoid and the sphenoid. Okay, are we good? All right, so where do I start here? So the sphenoid sinus, as we said, is located below the cella tercica. It, it too can be asymmetrical. So here is a cross section of the sphenoid bone where you will find the sinuses. When you see fluid collecting in the sphenoid, that's usually an indication of some kind of basal fracture here. Okay, so what is the best way to evaluate for the sphenoid? I just told you guys this. What was it? No lateral. lateral. So if they're no lateral and we see a straight line going across this area over here, that's an indication that there might be a fracture on the, on the basal part of the skull. <clears throat> okay, um, someone's phone was talking. Is that? Which one is that? No, it's mine. Was it Evelyn? Okay. Of course. All right, any questions here, guys? All right. Do these, do these um, pictures that I put up, does it help in understanding yeah. anatomy and location? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all the supplemental pictures I put up there does help a lot? It's not a waste of time. Okay, it's not a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the communication between sinuses and the nasal cavity. So the, uh, the nasal cavities, the sinuses provide drainage between the sinuses cavities of the frontal ethmoid and maxillary sinuses. Uh, the area of this communication is located within the nasal meatus. Meatus just means passageway, in case you guys were wondering. Okay, nasal meatus, meatus just means passageway. Okay, and this is all found within the, the nasal cavity. Uh, if we get down to the more specifics of this, the osteomedial complex of how the sinuses drain, uh, what I do want you to focus on here is, first of all, when you're looking at this white part, the white part, this is bone, okay? This is the bone, and then you have all the different uh, segments of the sinuses and the passageway of how the fluids drain. So what I do want you guys to focus on here is the ethmoid bulla, the ethmoid bulla receives from the frontal and ethmoid sinuses. I should say frontals. What does your say? Yeah, frontals. Yeah, frontals. Yeah. Yeah. Frontal. Okay, let me fix that, guys. OCD just kicked in. From frontals and ethmoids. Okay. Um, and then the infidibulum receives from the maxillaries. So they can continue to drain, so the drainage can either come out of your, your nose or out of your mouth or you swallow it, okay. right? Back of your throat. Okay. So that's how you get rid of some of the, the, the drainage. And if you can't get rid of that drainage, it can cause a terrible, terrible headache. Okay, any questions here? So that's one of the things that happen, especially if you guys have like sinus problems. Um, and you lay down, the first thing that happens is you start to cough because it's draining and tickling in the back of your throat. So if you have sinus problems, you'll have a tendency to, a tendency to cough when you lay down. All right, so anatomy review identify the four sinus groups. What are the four sinus groups? Frontal, Frontal maxilla, maxilla, sphenoid, ethmoid. Ethmoid is anterior and sphenoid is posterior, okay. So uh, these are the views that we are going to perform in assessing the sinuses. Are you guys familiar with these views already? Yes. Lateral and PA Caldwell? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I hope so. Renee. Renee. No. You're not. I mean, I haven't done it in the hospital. That oh, okay, year. I know, but we covered this already, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, this is nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing new. So it's right, lateral right. and PA Caldwell. <laughs> Like you this. were here last so week. So the right? only difference between <laughs> so the only difference between these views in performing skull and facials and sinuses is what? The lower, Just lower. Well, we're looking at this, but all the differences is between typical factors. Right. Okay, remember how we talked about what was it? It was 
last semester, chess versus ribs. Same thing. Same positioning. The only thing KB. that we did was we changed the technical factors to C ball with ribs. So with sciences, we're going to lighten up our technical factors, okay, to see sciences because they're air filled. If they're too dark, you can't see anything. Okay. So here we have the frontals, okay, right in your frontal bone. Here is your cella tricica. Mm -hmm. So right below that, air, air is black, right? Mm -hmm. So right below the cella tricica, this is your sphenoid, okay? And then there's going to be a separation between the two over here, and this is going to be the ethmoid, and then your maxillaries. Now, in a PA Caldwell, PA Caldwell, so you're face down, what's your degree of angulation? 15 degrees. 15 degrees, which way are we going? Caudal. Up or down, so we're going caudal, okay, caudally. And a PA Caldwell, frontals you will see, okay, your ethmoid and your sphenoid, again, they're going to be superimposed, so we can't tell which is which unless we do the lateral. So if there is something going on here, the best view to evaluate this would be on the lateral, okay? And then you have your maxillaries. This is a open mouth waters. We do this also to evaluate the sphenoid in the open mouth. So the sphenoid sinus is going to be projected in an open mouth view. So basically here in a trans, it's called a PA transoral projection. What we're doing is we're using the mental meatal line. We have them put it up on the image receptor and then we have them open up. Ah. Okay, and we're going to evaluate the sphena through the open mouth. Hopefully the teeth don't get in the way. Okay. So the ethmoid is going to be projected through the nasal cavity. Frontals, again, frontals are obvious. Maxillaries are obvious. But this is where we have the most difficulty in observing is the ethmoid and the sphenoid. A. Astoids? Why is it an M? Okay, yeah, it's pointing to the mastoids. Oh, but it's put it labeled A. A. Air? What is the what should, what the book say? This is the same it's the same label on your uh, yeah. same picture yeah. in your book. So what's A? Oh, it's oh, mastoids, oh, but why why A? Angle? Angle? Air cells. Air cells. Air cells. Air cells. Okay, I can understand air cells. What does it say, Bahar? Bahar. Bahar. Yeah, I'm just looking. It's on the water projection. I mean, it's air cells. Air cells. I, I don't think. Know it's anything. Okay, let's just say air cells. But it's pointing to the mastoids. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions here? Keep on going then. All right. This is a, another good projection. Is the SMV. Remember, the top of your head, the vertex, is going to be. Oof. It's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> so the top of your head is going to touch touch the image receptor. SMB is the uh, what is it? The submento vertex projection. So we're looking from the bottom up. Um, to evaluate for sinuses in this particular view, you will see the burnt out maxillaries. They'll be burnt out. You won't see them, but this is the general location here of the maxillaries. You will see, uh, you'll also see the ethmoid and the sphenoid in true profile as you're looking at it from the bottom up. Now, the way that you identify the sphenoid, remember how the sphenoid, I'm sorry, the ethmoid looks, it looks like a bat with wings, okay? Here are the wings. And then you have one in the center. This is Mickey Mouse. I'm always using Mickey Mouse as a reference, right? All right, so here's Mickey Mouse's head and his two ears. So it's either Disney ethmoid. or Star Wars with you, right? One or the other. And then remember <laughs> what we said, the ethmoid is going to be anterior to the sphenoid, okay? So anterior to the sphenoid, there's the ethmoid, so behind that then is the, the sphenoid, right behind it. All right? A again, what's so A? Air cells? Air cells, air cells air mastoids. <sighs> What's B? That's the that's the ridges, right? It's a thick part. It's a thick part of the sphenoid. Petrosphenoid. I mean, not the the temporal, not the sphenoid. It's petros. What's B? Petros body. This is the petros, the thick portion of the temporal bone. This right here. 
sphenoid is going to be up here because here's your, this is your uh, sphenoid air um, sinus, so the sphenoid is going to be up here. And then what is this? For magnum. magnum and this little projection. The odontoid. Right the odontoid, okay. You guys are good. You guys have your x ray eyes now. No. Yeah, you do. And what is this line going? What is this line going down the middle? The vomer. The You guys see that? The vomer? The vomer The vomer. It kind of looks like a, what's that birth control? IUD. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. Yeah. No, she's right. It does look like that. I mean, I don't have one, but I'm saying. I've never seen one. All right. That's why I have four kids. Yeah, exactly. Obviously. We weren't using IUDs. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what's birth control? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making Shannon blush over here. Yep. Okay. Um, let's now. The next discussion here is the. Reese method? Huh? The Reese? Is that what it's Yeah, okay. So the, the next. Pants on. That's the first thing. The next discussion here is the, the orbits. Is the orbits in its relation to the optic paran foramina? Okay, the optic foramina is the is the passageway of the the orbital nerves, and it's basically an extension of the retina. Okay, so the way it is situated is that it has an angle. The orbit. In relation to the uh, foramina, there's going to be a 30 degree cephalic angulation. Okay? And I, do you guys have this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have this AML thing? Oh, no. I, added, oh, no. I added that one. Okay? So when you look at this, it's closely related to your imaginary line from your acanthian to your uh, EAM. Okay? It's closely related to that. And then when you're looking at it through the anterior model over here, it projects medially at approximately 37 degrees. Okay? So if I were to, if I wanted to visualize this optic foramen, we have to do two things. First is I'm going to tilt my head so that my cantomiatal is perpendicular with the image receptor. So this is the first thing that I do, okay? And then I need to do this. So now I'm gonna need to turn my face on the affected side, how many degrees? 37. 37 degrees, and now the optic foramen should be in the view within the orbit. Oh my God. Interesting. Okay, so how this do you, particular- How do you eyeball 37 degrees? Huh? <laughs> you don't. You don't? You, you gotta have calipers. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, you, you basically just start at 90 degrees and you turn it like 20 to 30. And then you check it? This is also called, and so here's the cheat. This is also called the nose cheek. You can put your nose, your cheek, and your chin on the, on the flat surface. So it's three point landings. Those three things have to be touching the, the, the table or the image receptor. And if you're doing an AP, let's just say for example now the patient can't be laying down on their face well, first of all, why are we having them lay on their face? Because that's the closest. Oh. Like the oh. No. Yes and no. Okay, closer to the image what we're trying to do is we're trying to get closer to the image receptor, okay? So that's why they would be face down. But they may not be able to lay face down, so now you have to do the opposite. You're still going to do the angulation, but now you're going to imagine a flat surface going across your nose, your cheek, and your, your chin. No. We're gonna practice this. We'll practice this in the lab. She said no. no thanks. <laughs> We're gonna practice this in the lab. Put your hand on so, me. Like. Yeah, this is known as the the Reese method. The Reese method. Yeah, it is. No. Yes. Yeah. The Reese method. It's it Can is in the Like the upper. Huh? Yeah, you actually should be doing it in an upright position again because we want to assess air and fluid levels. But again, it depends on your patient's. You know, situation. 
Can they stand up for you or they can't? Yeah, okay, so you just put the thing on their face? Yeah. Uh, Miss Smith and I will show you guys uh, an easier way of how, of how to do this. It does sound very complicated because what we said a couple of weeks ago is that it says nose, chin, cheek, but we're not very symmetrical and some people's noses are bigger than others, okay? Some are smaller, some are fatter, okay? Chin to nose. I mean, there's some have cheekbones, some don't. So, but what we try to focus on is maintaining those angles. AML perpendicular of 30, what is it, 30 degrees, and the other one is 37 from the mid-sagittal plane. If we stick to that, then we should be okay in getting that optic foramen within the, the, the orbital margins. Okay, so some more anatomy. The base of the orbit, the base of the orbit is referring to the rim of the orbit, and it's composed of the frontal, zygoma, and the maxilla. We're not even talking about the orbit itself, we're just talking about the rim. So the rim is formed by three bones, frontal, zygoma, and maxilla, okay? Mm -hmm. The rest of the bones within the, what you guys were calling it the socket, or within the orbit, eye hole, is, <laughs> is going to be formed in addition to those three bones, okay? You'll also have uh, your lacrimal, your maxilla, your palatine, and then your sphenoid, as well as your ethmoid. So the orbit is composed of seven bones all together. Okay, three, we have three cranial bones and we have four facial bones. It is a lot. So if you break your orbit, you're breaking a lot of bones. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you break your orbit, you have, yeah, you can break a lot of bones. Yes. That is, yeah. great, that is a great assessment. Great assessment. Okay. Uh, openings of the orbit, uh, optic foramen. This is where the optic nerve goes through. It is an extension of the retina. <coughs> then you have the super, superior orbital fissure, which gives, uh, gives way for four cranial nerves for the eye and controls uh, eyelid movement, eye and eyelid movement. And then the inferior allows for nerves and vessels for the cheek, nose, upper lip, and the teeth. The area between the optic foramen and the superior orbital fissure, fissure is a very thin bone. It's still part of the sphenoid bone. This is all part of the sphenoid. This very thin bone is known as the sphenoid strut. And when we are doing the rhesus method, this is what we're looking for to see if there is a break in that. It's a very thin bone. Okay, any questions? The strut. The strut. Strut your stuff. Okay. So we have different types of fractures here. The first one is a blowout fracture. The blowout fracture is an orbital fracture of the floor, driving the inferior rectus muscle down beneath the floor. Bless you. Bless you. And it gets trapped in there. It doesn't come back up. It gets trapped. And what that happens is that it causes diplo diplo. Diplopia, double vision. Diplopia, which means double vision. <laughs> and then we have a tripod fracture. <laughs> you guys gotta let me in on the jokes. You guys are laughing at me. It's a double chin. <laughs> double chin. Double chin. Yes, yeah, so it causes double chin. <laughs> okay, a tripod fracture involves the zygomatic bone, and it is a separation of the processes. So it involves the orbital process arch and the maxillary process. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. So that's your tripod fracture. <coughs> Did you guys ever take a look at this baseball real close? Who signed it? Babe Ruth. Oh, Cypress? Oh, Cypress. Oh, yeah. I put that on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's the Cypress Rad Tech logo. <laughs> <laughs> I do stuff like that. <laughs> oh, Dr. I did see F. Red bio. Oh, I saw yeah, I, I, I pasted it over. Yeah, I put it in, in, uh, on top of uh, what's his name, Bouchon's face. Yeah. <laughs> my baseball cap, and my had like the full beard going on. Yeah, I was taken years ago. Okay. So let me see. Identify the seven bones of the left orbit. So here, A. 
I'm not even gonna look at here. Let's do this. A frontal bone. Frontal bone. B. Are you right here? See what? Sphenoid. Okay. Then we have this hole right here. Or Opti optical foramen. Okay, yeah. optical Check. foramen. And this is the supraorbital fissure. Supra fissure. And the bone that separates the two Strut. is the strut. 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 Okay, now I'm going to step back here a little bit. All right, so D is this bone right here. Temporal. So that's your temporal bone? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, down here, it's related to this bone. Maxilla? Yeah. What? D is psychomatic. Look at the Oh, I'm sorry. D. Okay. Yeah, this is a zygomatic. I'm sorry. You're right. Okay, this is a zygomatic. Okay, and then E related to this bone, maxillary, and then Is this that point or lacrimal? Yeah, G. What's, what's that? Ethmoid. Ethmoid, and then lacrimal. Okay. And so the lacrimal, yeah, the way to remember this is the lacrimal is as close to the nose. So it's the, your tear duct and your nose together. And then what? Inferior. 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 Inferior orbital fissure. Well, here's superiors. And then inferior. Oh, you're talking about this? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. your inferior, but it's not labeled. Yeah, you're right. That's inferior. So it goes uh, optic, superior, superior inferior, and inferior. Yes. And then strut. Okay. And then the strut. Oh, this like this. You guys look over here. There was this was mislabeled. Okay. So it should say A C D, not A B C. Because it's it's referring to this. The optic foramen is gives way for optic nerve in the retina that turns into the retina. The sphenoid strut, yeah. You see what I'm talking about? Yes. In your slides, it's, it's relating the two. There is no nerves or vessels that go through the strut, so it should say here A C D in relation to the optic foramen A, superior orbital fissure C, and inferior orbital strut. No, that's I should say Fisher. <laughs> so change that to okay. Fisher. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are we good? Yes. Okay. So this is the Reese method right here. So this is where the AML in a 37 degree rotation, this puts the optic foramen within the orbit, but it is very specific. When we are, when we are looking at this optic foramen, the optic foramen is gonna be located in the bottom fourth, the lower fourth, <coughs> the lower fourth quadrant. quadrant. Bottom outer fourth. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> of this, of the quadrant. So if you're looking at your, if you're looking at the orbit like this, in a properly positioned, properly positioned uh, Reese, it's going to be in the bottom, bottom fourth, bottom outer fourth. Okay, right here. Okay. What? Can I erase? We're, we're going to cover this again on the positioning. I was just throwing it out there. Because that's what I do. Yes. We'll cover it again. All right. Uh, water's uh, projection facial bones. Um, let's start with A. Psychomatic process. Uh, yeah, psychomatic prominence. Okay, that's process. Okay, so that's the process, and this is part of your upper jaw, right? Mm -hmm. So then this is what? 
Maxilla. Maxillaries. Okay. There's two B's. Then yeah. A, B, C. Nasal. 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 Bony, bony nasal septum. Huh? And then your maxilla joins up right here. Okay, so what is this point they're called? Anterior nasal spine. Yes? Yes. I have no idea what E is pointing to. Is that pointing to the arch? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's pointing to the arch? Okay, and then you have the mandibular notch. Here's your condyloid, and this is the other one right there. So F is pointing to coracoid. Is it coracoid, coronoid, coronoid. Coronoid. coronoid? coronoid. Okay, so that's coronoid F. I know they all sound the same. And G. Condyloid. Condyloid. So we got coronoid or coracoid. Coronoid is F. G is the condyloid, and then we have the same thing. Condyle, okay. <laughs> and then in between is the Masculine. the notch. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Coronoid, condyloid, mastoid. Okay. And then this is uh, what bone is that? It's mastoid. <laughs> Say it, Erica. What Tem temporal. Temporal, temporal bone. bone. Okay. <laughs> and then frame and magnum. The hole. We're still at the jaw, so now this jaw is pointing right here. Gonian. The Gonian, okay. All right, you guys got this. You got it. You're good. You're good, okay. What projection is this? Water. SM SM SMB, so we're going from the bottom up, okay? So here is mm -hmm. the hard palate, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then this part here is palatine process, palatine process of what bone? Maxilla. maxilla. The maxilla. Okay, so that's the maxilla. So then back here would be the palatine. So that's the palatine. palatine. Okay. Um, ooh, we were doing this earlier. What are what are these? Oh, what's this? Arch. Zygomatic arch. Zygomatic arch. So someone mentioned this to me the other day. We actually call these jug handles. When you're looking at it from the inferior of the superior view, we we'll call them jug handles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the zygomatic arch. And then, what is D? What? Hamless of the pterygoid Oh, this, this looks more like it. And that fits in it. Yeah. Okay, so the pterygoid, the hamless of well, which bone? The sphenoid. The sphenoid, okay. <laughs> okay, how about, if, how about if we look at the different openings? Do we know the openings? Ross. Ross, which so stands for, like Ross. for so we're going this way, right? Rotundum, ovale, spinosum. Oh, spinosum. Okay. Rodents of a knee. Ross. And so then what would this be right here? The super overall fissure. Is it the super overall fissure? Or is that an answer? Isn't that the optic um, fissure? It's the fissure. Yeah. yeah, this is your fissure right here. So you have your superior and then you have your inferior down here. All right, guys. You guys know this. Oh. Do you want me to keep on going? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go? Yeah, just keep going. Okay, there. Yeah. Going, going now. All right, how about, how about a 15-minute break? Okay. Can, I, can I use one? 